Tens of thousands of displaced Palestinians have been sheltering at schools run by the UN refugee agency UNRWA. Al Jazeera spoke to some of them at a facility in central Gaza. I'm from Gaza and we found nothing here. You need to fight to buy some water. Food is not good at all. They shouldn't have brought such bad food. We came from Gaza and we're being attacked here and there and everywhere. Our situation is miserable and our wives and daughters are in the streets. No Arab country wants to help. Why are we living? We escaped. We are scared. Shelling is everywhere. The world must understand our situation. We have children and we have sick people. And also, also, they displace people who are suffering from cancer. We are terrorized, and someone must understand how terrorized and horrified we are. We have no food, we have no water, there are no toilets. We are left to stay on the streets. They have destroyed my house. I have no other place to live. I don't know where to go. Our life is hell. They told us to go to the south, and here we are in the south. I'm sick and tired of everything. I don't need food. I just need to go back to my house. Take me to my place and I will live in a tent there. Well, our correspondent, Mohammed Jamjoun, is standing by for us. He's in occupied East Jerusalem. Mohammed, uh, you've spoken to UNRWA. What have they told you about the situation in Gaza? Tom, uh, we heard extremely stark and dire warnings from the UN Refugee Agency for Palestinians from UNRWA. They had a press conference a short while ago here in occupied East Jerusalem. Let me tell you just a little bit about what we heard. The UNRWA Commissioner, uh, Commissioner General Philippe Lazzarini, he said that they need to be able to bring supplies into Gaza, that there needs to be a humanitarian corridor established, that no place in Gaza is safe. He said that the situation was absolutely unprecedented. He said wars, all wars, even this war, have laws and they need to be followed. Um, he went on to say that Gaza is running out of water and electricity. He said Gaza is being strangled and it seems the world right now has lost its humanity. If we look at the issue of water, we all know that water is life and Gaza is running out of water and Gaza is running out of life. So extremely dire warnings about what is going on from UNRWA. Now, I asked the spokesperson for UNRWA, Tamara Rifai, about those reports that we've been hearing the last few hours that perhaps water had been restored by Israel to southern Gaza. Uh, she said that they have not yet been able to confirm that that has happened and explained more about what potentially might happen going forward. Take a listen to what she told me. Until about an hour ago, our colleagues in southern Gaza, our colleagues in Rafah, could not confirm that water had been restored. But even if the water is restored, the water is going to go to big uh, containers in Gaza, which means that they, the, the, the water will need to be trucked to different locations. And to truck the water to different locations, we need fuel for the trucks. So it's really a chain of, of events that need to happen before people can actually get water. Mohammed, what is the Israeli government saying about the potential for regional escalation? Tom, throughout the day, uh, we've been hearing just very bellicose rhetoric from Israeli officials uh, with regards to the steps going forward. Uh, we heard from the top spokesperson for the Israeli army several hours ago. He essentially said that Israel will be able to operate anywhere in the region in order to counter threats that they feel that they have to counter. Um, that was clearly a message being sent to regional actors that they should not think about attacking Israel, but it was also a, a message being sent domestically to Israeli citizens that the country basically will do whatever is needed to protect itself. Um, now, we also heard from the prime minister earlier in the day, Benjamin Netanyahu. He met for the first time with that expanded emergency cabinet that has been uh, established this past week. And he said that Hamas will be demolished. And then we also heard from the defense minister, Yoav Gallant. Uh, he, a little bit later in the afternoon, said that the country is going to do everything it can to destroy Hamas. So this is the rhetoric we're hearing. Israel basically telling everybody who will listen that they are going to destroy Hamas, that they will operate in any theater in the region that they see fit to protect themselves. Um, and it's going to be interesting to see if any of this language shifts at all 
tomorrow because tomorrow you have U.S. Secretary of State Antony Blinken returning here for his second visit in less than a week. Uh, he is going to be meeting with Israeli officials. So it will be interesting to see on the eve of this visit. We've heard so much aggressive language today. We'll see tomorrow what exactly we'll be hearing from Israeli officials going forward. Tom. Okay, thanks so much, Mohammed. Uh, That's Mohammed Jemjun for us in occupied East Jerusalem.